Hey, how you doing? This is Leather coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I decided I want to go over some of my old knives I have from the past and some of the new versions of them that I have, the new versions. These right here, this is a, this is a, um, a charade SC500 Scrimshaw. And as a scrimshaw, a buffalo's fighting. These were popular hunting knives in the old days. In the 1960s and 70s, my grandpa used to carry one of these. My dad carried a buck knife. And I carried a buck knife. But I did have one of these too. And the one I had was the 125 OT. I'll show you that one coming up. These are all collectors for me. I like collecting old knives too. I know you guys only, only just see like my uh, Cold Steels and a couple Benchmade and maybe a Spider Co or two or whatever. But uh, I started collecting these first. They're the old knives. I have a whole bunch of them. And these are my Mustang pattern knives. And for your information, the Broken Skull, the Mustang Broken Skull, wasn't designed by Steve Austin. Colt's still been making that pattern before Steve Austin even came into the picture. They just took it and they, they, they took their Lone Star, lightened it up, and said, Steve Austin made it. Okay, whatever. But these patterns, I don't know how, I don't even know back how long they go back to, but I know that, that, uh, that Charade made these up until like about 2003 or four when they got taken over by the Chinese company, Taylor, Sh Taylor Charade or uh, whatever the name was, Taylor, they went through the Taylor Brands com company. But these are some beautiful knives. If you like knives that are, have like a lot of quality and, and just, and they're just beautiful to look at. These are awesome. Back in the day, these were these were like the you know the top hunting knives for folding folding hunting knives. Not no more, but they were back in the day. Like I said, this is the SC five hundred, the Scrimshaw five hundred. This side's blank. Ten ninety five carbon steel. Got to keep these oil. And you gotta keep them clean. Every time you touch the blade, always wipe them. Because they will rot on you. It's bare metal, bare, twin, bare, 10, twin, bare 1095 car, high carbon steel. It will rot. Don't think it won't. Next one up is my old timer. And these knives are sharp too. They came, you know, really sharp and they hold an edge for a super long time. T 1095 high carbon steel does a pretty good job of that. Demonstration of the sharpness. Really sharp. Nice blades. Great old hunting knives, but like I do say, they, these these will have up and down play, and it's because the the liner lock doesn't fit super tight on the blade tang, the base of the blade tang. It has nothing to do with the function though, and these do sit to one side. It's because the way that the liner liner's made, it's like it takes up one side of the blade and it pushes the blade to the other side. It's just the way that they're made. So if you get one of these and it's like that, it's not flawed. That's the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely love these though. A lot more craftsmanship went into making these old blades. 
nowadays if you see something like that from a company like Cold Steel or somebody like that or Benchmade or somebody like that, it'll be super expensive. And this is Uncle Henry. Uncle Henry was like the top of line for the charade. It came with a little bit better dirt durable and skills. These were made to look like um, actually chip bone or, or jig bone, should I say. Really nice scales, even though they're not real real bone. Actually, they're nicer than real bone, if you ask me, because these won't crack and split and shrink and warp and do all sorts of weird things on you over time. These knives are all made in the 60s and 70s and 80s. They're all old. But I love them. I don't want to carry them no more though because you know they're too hard to open and open and close and all that kind of stuff and they're not they're not my choice for for a knife that I want to carry but they are my choice for a knife that I want to collect this is my oldest one I'm not even sure how old this one is I think it goes back to the 60s the blade tang is a little bit different it's 125OT that's the model number. The Uncle Henry is a 127 UH. 127 UH and the Scrimshaw is a 500 SC 500. Scrimshaw 500. This one right here is the new Chinese version of the of the 125 OT. With this one, it's a very nicely made knife, but guess what? It's just a slip joint. But that's what all these are, really. They're really just slip joints with a safety feature. The liner lock on these is really just a, a safety feature for the slip joint. Because they're all really hard to open. These are definitely one hand, I mean two hand opening and closing knives. This one has stainless steel blade. It has the Chinese, new Chinese stainless steel. It's got a weird shape for a blade. The handle's nice though. But I wouldn't buy another one of these. I wouldn't even recommend it because it looks kind of goofy to me. It, it doesn't look like the uh, older ones. I like the older ones. I'd rather have the older one with the steel that's going to rust than have this one with the steel that's not going to rust. That's a nice memory to my collection. And the bolsters on these, they're not like bright, shiny um, nickel silver. They have like a yellow tint to them on the Chinese version. So they're a little bit different. This one over here, this is, this is Cold Steel's first, first try at making the, the um, Mustang. And this was called the Lone Star. Actually, it's a really cool knife. It has Oz 8 blade. Stainless steel blade, three and a half millimeters thick, so it's thicker than the original. And it's got a triad lock, so it's a lot more strong and sturdier. And you can open and close with one hand, because it's got a mid lock instead of a back, uh, instead of a back, uh, instead of a um, liner lock. So you open and close with one hand. Very nice knife. But these weren't that popular though. Cold still stopped making them. I'm glad I got mine. They are a little bit on the heavy side because the, the handle's made with a st thick stainless steel liners slash scales sort of. And the scale is just a, a scale that goes on top of the, 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 the thick stainless steel liner. Aluminum back spacer. Stainless steel lock bar, triad lock. They're all about the same size. They're all like four inches, five inch handles, nine and a half quarter, a little bit like that. I'm not gonna go with this one because this is a Mackinac. That's a different handle style. I just put it over here because it came out the same time that the Lone Star came out. And I bought them together. So I keep them together in my collection. This one right here is the newest cold steel version of the of the 
of the Mustang style from Charade. Three and a half, in, three and a half millimeter blade again. This one's made extremely nice. This is a lot better than, if you ask me, I know the, the original is, still, is always going to be the original. And I know everybody's always going to love the original and stuff like that. But this one is nicer than the original. It still has a high carbon blade. It has a, um, a SK-5 high carbon blade. It's about four inches long. The handle's like five and a quarter inches, so it's nine and a quarter total length. The bolsters and everything look like they're made out of stainless steel. And, you, and it's got adjustable screws, so it's, it's, it's put together, held together with screws, which is much better than rivets. I love it. SK-5, made in China. Now this one I would recommend. Very nicely made. Very well done, Cold Steel. The only thing that I would do to this one to make it a little bit different is I would have made it with stainless steel. I don't know, like I like it on your S30 S30V, or even even the Japanese steel. The um, Oz 10 would be nice, but that's what I would do with this one. I like carbon steel, but the only thing I like about carbon steel, you always have to maintain, and you always have to worry about it rusting. It, but, you know, other than that, it holds the edge really good, it's really tough. I like carbon steel, but for pocket knives, I tend to like stainless steels because if you're going to carry it in your pocket, you know, you might sweat or whatever, and if you sweat on carbon steel, it's going to rot. So I just think stainless steel is the best steel for a pocket knife. If I'm going to have a carbon steel knife, I'd rather have it in a fixed blade. And then I want it to be coated too. I'd rather have it Cerakoted or something. Something to help it prevent from rusting. Okay, before they made this one, they came out with these. Oh, I already got one out. These are the Broken Skulls. I got two of them. I absolutely love this knife, I just hate the name. <laughs> And I hate them saying that, that Steve Austin designed this style of knife. Steve Austin didn't design this style of knife. This style of knife has been around for a long time. It's American classic for Folding Hunter. But this is the version of it that I like. Why? Because it's fast, super lightweight, only weighs like about three and a half ounces. And it's super fast, and it's my favorite, one of my favorite um, folders to carry because I like lightweight folders. I like folders that don't pull down my pants. I like folders with stainless steel blades, you know, especially um, very good stainless steel blades. Like this is CTSHHP. Both of mine are CTSHHP ones. They make these in S35VN now. <clears throat> I don't have that one. This one goes in my um, my EDC drawer. I just have it out here to show you where it would go if it was in the roll. But these are my old school Mustang pattern folding hunters. The, they date all the way back to the 1960s. Most of them are from the 70s and 80s. And these are from, I, I can't remember when they made these. I want to say in the 2000s, like 2010 or something. I'm not sure when they made these. This is brand new for 2020. That one's brand new for 2020. I don't remember when they came out with these either. It was a few years ago. And this is the one that this is the one that I always keep in my drawer. It represents all of these. It represents all of these. Next week I'll do another video on some of my old my other favorite favorite old large classics. And I think those are gonna be like the 110 pattern. The Buck 110 pattern. And I'll bring out all my Buck 110 copies and Buck 110s I've collected over the years. And my new versions of them, too, that I can share with you. But this is my collection of these. It's complete. I'm not getting any more. I'm done with these. This one just came today. 
and I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. The Ranch Boss 2. That's what it's called. And it's just an up-to-date up up -to -date version of the old charade. I think this is the best up-to-date um, remake of the old charade that I've seen so far. I like that, that they put the, the adjustable pins in instead of having the, 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 the pins that you can't adjust. I like how you can take this one apart if you want to, it looks like. And there's no blade play in this one. This one's solid. You get an excellent work knife. Excellent work knife, excellent hunting knife. For those who don't mind having a two-hand opening and closing knife. That's what this is. It's not a one-hand opening or closing knife. It's a two-hand knife. Just like they used to make them back in the day. Before they had thumb studs and and all the modern things that we have now where it's easy to open knives with one hand. These are awesome knives though. They will do the job. Oh yeah, we didn't test the sharpness on this one. Let's see how sharp it is. It's sharper than the old ones too, but that's to be expected. It's a cold steel. <laughs> it's a cold steel. That's definitely a cold steel knife. Super, super razor blade sharp. That's scary sharp. Excellent knife. Ranch Boss 2. I would recommend it. I highly recommend it. For those who want an old style slip joint type knife. I, I, I know this is not a total slip joint because it has a liner lock, but... To me, it is like it is a slip joint with a safety feature. That's why I call it. Because these don't operate like liner lock knives, where you can flip them open and all that kind of stuff. Because they have constant pressure from the from the lock bar, or from the slip joint bar, whatever you call it, the tension bar. It keeps a lot of tension on the blade. This is a really nicely made knife. Absolutely love it. It's a very well made knife. This rag has a little bit of oil on it. I'm fixing to put it in storage. I don't want to have any finger salt from my hands or whatever. It is a sweaty day today. It's 100, 105 degrees outside. And that's where it goes. That's his home. New home. The Ranch Boss weighs about 5.3 ounces. Awesome knife. Highly recommend it, people. There you go. That's how I store them. You know, go in the safe just like that. But that's it for today. I just had to do a little short video on that, and I just want to share that with you. Like I said, next week we'll do we'll do one on my old buck knives, old buck one tens and buck one ten copies, made you know from the United States. All my old knives. They're, that, those date back to the sixties too. And I have a bunch of them too. I have like queens, charades, cases, um, shot and Morgan. I think that's about it of all the, the, the ones that I have, the clones of the, the 110 that I have. And then I have a bunch of 110s too. All right. Well, peace out. I'll see you next week. I hope, you, hope, I hope coronavirus is not killing anybody. I hope everybody's doing okay. I hope everybody's having a good life out there. I hope you're able to take care of your families and everything's okay for you. Peace out. Stiletto.